actually. Okay, so let's start from the motivation. So the motivation comes from the uh, classical Nagland uh, number theory. We will only talk about the global unramified case. So our F will be a global field. This A will be the real of adults in F. This O will be the brains of integral adults. So this G will be a reductive group over F, such like the G O N. So the classical uh, Nagland correspondence in number theory. So maybe one way to formulate it is the following. So given a uh, general representation, sigma, which is a homomorph homomorphism from the absolute gamma group of F to G check of E. Here, this G check is the Nagland like, dual group. It's the, it's the reductive dual reductive group of G, and this E is a coefficient field. So you want to find an automorphic form called F sigma. So it's just a certain function on this double quotient, GA quotient from quotient by G F on from the left and G O from the right. So an E valued function. So of course this assignment should satisfy some properties. For instance, the L functions should match and this F sigma should satisfy some Hegel property and so on. So I will not mention them. Instead, I want to talk about the geometric picture of this uh, correspondence. So by geometric picture, I mean more or less uh, things appear here, so they have geometric incarnations, and we can try to translate this correspondence into a conjecture about these geometric incarnations. So to talk about geometric things, let's now let f to be a function field of a curve x, smooth projective geometric connected curve over fq, and this coefficient field e to be q of bar. So let's start from looking at the Ganova set. So now the set of Ganova representations, more or less, you can uh, identify it with the set of g check local systems on X because more or less the form, it for the minimum group of X is just the absolute Ganova group of F. So then let's look at the automorphic side. So by, by well-known theorem of will, so we know that this double quotient is bijective to FQ points of bound G. Here, this bound G is the modernist space or actually modernist stack of G torsors on X. So in the previous uh, picture, so we, we study the functions on this double quotient. In other words, we study functions on FQ points of bound G. Now we use the gross index shifts function correspondence to translate to shifts on bound G. So roughly speaking, this Correspondence says that there's a correspondence between functions on FQ points of bound G to shifts on bound G, but you need to understand the notion of shifts correctly. So it's not just constructable theoretic shift, it's actually real shift. So, but anyway, so this correspondence is given by taking Frobenius, taking trace of Frobenius, uh, taking the trace of the Frobenius action on the fiber on the stock of your shift. So it's just some procedure which allows you to translate functions to shifts. So, okay, now let's translate our goals. So we've given a sigma, which is now a G-check local system on X. We want to produce a shift F sigma on bound G, which of course should satisfy some condition. One of them is the Hick angle property, which I will tell you now. So I will only talk about the case when G is G O N. So the other cases, this condition can be described using uh, Tanaki formalism and German Sataki, but we don't have enough time for them. So for GON, you can consider the following modular problem. So it classified two G torsors identified on a punctured disk, by pun a punctured curve. By punctured curve, I mean X minus a close point little x, and you allow this little x to move. So in particular, you have two maps to bound G, remembering each uh, G torsor, and you have a map to X, remember, during the, the moving point. So you can consider the functor that pull back from the left arm and push forward along the right arm. So the requirement, the Hegel angle property says that if you apply this functor to your F sigma, so it should be uh, equivalent isomorphic to F sigma box sigma. But in fact, this is a structure rather than a property. So, and it should satisfy some Power compatibilities, which I will not mention. So, this is just a direct geometric analog of uh, Hick Engel property in number theory diagnostics. Let's translate to this. 
So, and uh, roughly speaking, this is known as the uh, geometric magnets conjecture or geometric magnets uh, correspondence. And it's uh, so when for GON like 20 years ago uh, by Frank and Gisbury and we know them, then sigma is irreducible. And for the general case, when sigma is not irreducible, it can be solved using uh, a result of Sparman Gisbury, which tells you how to do parabolic inductions for these hyperangular shapes. So, but, but now let's look at the nature of this correspondence. Like, what's the assignment from sigma to f sigma? So, I, will, I would like to view it as a spectral decomposition of the category of shifts on bound G. What do I mean? So, I mean the following. So, suppose G check local systems were parameterized by an affine scheme, look says G check, but in fact, it's not. But if this was the case, then the previous correspondence suggests that this uh, commutative ring of functions on uh, the G check should act on this shape of G. So, and you should view this, this category as something live over spec of this O. In other words, live over the G check such that this F sigma lives over the point sigma. So this is just like, Sometimes going to be know if you have a computer algebra acting on an affine category, you can do some spectral decomposition as condition like this. So if you are more ambitious, you might want to compare the category of shift of bound G with quasi current shifts on Noxus G check. But uh, in fact, you can do it in that setting, but it's easier to do it in other settings. I mean, historically, so people first compare these categories in in the setting we call the DRAM setting instead of in the previous uh, LRT setting. So let's move to the DRAM setting. From now on, our curve X should be defined over complex numbers and our constant field is just uh, C. So we turn to this setting because the description is easier and it's uh, earlier in history. So this, then this uh, log says G check, it actually exists as a well-defined algebra geometry objects. It's an algebra stack. So, and we should understand shifts, no longer as LF shifts because we are over C, we should understand as D modules or quasi current shifts equipped with flat connections. So if you don't like D modules, just imagine them as some perfect shifts for the complex geometry. So then the best hope due to Benson and Greenfield says that there might be an equivalence from the mode of G to category of particular shifts on Luxus G check, such that the delta shift at the sigma on the right hand side is sent to F sigma constructed before. So unfortunately, this is not the case unless G is the torus. So when G is the torus, this follows easily from theorem of equivalence. So however, when G is not the torus, it's not impossible because this such an equivalence would not be compatible with parabolic induction functors, or known as geometry essence theoretic functors. So let me introduce them. So it says the following: so let P be a parabolic subgroup of G and M be its Navier quotient. You consider the corresponding P check and the M check. So you have this diagram. So by induced torsors and induced local systems. So then you can consider two functors. The first is uh, Star pull around this arm and shrink pull push around this arm for the modules. The other is just cross correlation shift pull back and push forward. You can consider these two functors. And there are many evidences that says that if the, these two categories are equivalent, we would expect these two functors to match each other. However, they cannot match each other because the first functor preserves compact objects, but the second does not. The second does not because the uh, push forward, this functor does not preserve compact objects. So compact objects in this category are complex of perfect, a perfect complex of particular shapes. So here I'm secretly turning to derived categories. So because we have to do so. So but we know that in general, so push forward does not send perfect complex to a perfect complex. So nevertheless, so Actually, this is the only reader, at least conjecturally, that the best hope would fail. So in particular, we do expect the following. So it says that when you restrict to some smaller part, there's, such, there's an equivalence. 
But smaller product remain, we only consider irreducible local systems. We don't consider these problematic things. So they form an open subset of NOCSIS G-check. We consider QCore on them. And on the automatic side, we consider cuspidal key modules. Here, this cuspidal is a geometrical analog of cuspidal automorphic forms. So in geometry theory, you just define it as rather orthogonal to all these Eisenstein series. And the conjecture says that there should be such an equivalence. So, so far so good, but maybe people also would like to describe the entire category of your game model of G, or like de describe the entire category to call of Noxus G check. So then there are two strategies. So one is keep the mod and in our Q code, the other is keep Q code and string the mod. So let's first de describe the, the first strategy. So it says that conjecturally there's an equivalence from temporary de modules on bound G to quasi core shifts on Noxus G check. I do not have time to tell you what's the definition of tempered objects in tempered modules on Mount G, but it has to do with the fact that Mount G is not quasi compact. So this Mount G is, you know, it's not quasi compact. Even even on each connect component of it, it's not. So also this notion of also, this notion of temporary modules, we view it as an analog of the notion of temporary representations of real reductive groups. So for instance, so we have the following theorem that says that the category of the modules on bound G can be glued from the categories of temporary modules on bound M, where M are all these Navis, including G. So we view it as an analog of like not classification of real representations Representation of real reductive groups. So here I cannot tell you what's the precise meaning of the word glued, it's, but it's some rigorous construction. So this is for the first strategy that is shrink the mod of Bungie to temper the part of it. So the other strategy would be to enlarge this to cone. So this can be done by brutal force. So recall I mentioned that the compact objects inside this category are perfect complexes. So now we want to enlarge this Q code such that the compact objects also contain the essence and series of perfect complex for a smaller than the Vs. So we just do it by brutal force. So recall, so we have a, this perfect category of perfect complex can be embedded into the category of uh, coherent complexes. So this is not an equivalence because this Noxus G check is singular. So, but you can just define this enlarge the perf as the category generated by, cannot be generated by all these objects. And then you define this in our Q code by in the in reduction, uh, by, in the, by in the completion, you obtain some category. And the conjecture, which is known in the literature as categorical geometry knockdown conjecture, due to a linking category, it says that there's an equivalence, canonical equivalence from the model of bound G to this enlarged Q code. Let me also mention that, so there's an intrinsic characterization of uh, ob objects in this enlarged category inside this in code using singular support of coherent shifts, but we will not mention it in this talk. Let me also mention that they also proved the spectral gluing theorem, which is a complete analog of the automotive gluing theorem I mentioned before. It says that this enlarged Q code can be glued from all this Q code access M check in some standard way. So now let me tell you the status of this, these conjectures. So they're still open, but recently, I mean, in the past year, so some major progresses have been made. made. And let me, oh, first, of course, I need to say that the Torres case is real known like in the 80s or 90s. So it's just some from Mukai transformation. So let me say that the spectral decombination is known. That is, there's a canonical action of two conoxes G check on the model of bound G. This is due to the work of Benis and Greenfield on published work on this uh, kitchen combination of kitchen system and due to undocumented work of Gatesbury and Jacob. So <laughs> um, also, now we have the functor from D mode of G to the, this enlarged category of two cone noxus G check. 
So each uh, should be the conjecture uh, equivalence. So this will come in the incoming work of the real Barreto, Kevin Lin, and me. So, and you can, and people can prove that this is conservative using uh, a work uh, of uh, Fragman Rothkin in this year. So roughly speaking, they proved that the functor from temporal power of this to two co is conservative. And they proved that the gluing procedure of them are the same. Therefore, you obtain that this functor is conservative. But of course, you need some compatibility to construct this, this functor. So there's some work there. And moreover, so we know that when GSGON or PGON, so this functor is fully faithful. So due to some old work of Barreto on Vitaka coefficients. So in particular, since it's conservative and since it's fully faithful, you know that it's an incumbent. So maybe it's safe to say that the categorical general line is known for GON, although it's not written down. So, but the remaining thing to prove is to prove fully faithful for general G, but it's still open because that proof used the so-called mirabolic subgroups, which is special to GON. So, but people are still working on it and there are some progresses that I should not report. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the status of this uh, global or ramified geometric lagnon conjecture. Let me mention that there are also some related uh, things to study, like the ramified case when we when you allow some level structure on the curve, or like the local geometric lagnons and the local global compatibilities and many other things. So in general, I'm interested all, you know, all such things and I'm happy to talk with people on them. Okay, thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? For the group D, do you start with a group of C or do you allow a local system of groups of uh, C? So now also this G is constant on, on X, but I think so most of the results, at least for the drum setting, you can generalize it to some of Because then the notion of dual group is a little more complicated. Yes, yes, I agree. So um, people haven't started to, to do that part yet. So. All right, um, thank you very much.